Okay, this is great. This is great. I'm out here and, and then I'll show you the difference between poison ivy and box elder. This is poison ivy. Leaves of three, let it be. Actually, leaflets of three, let it be. You don't want to touch it. Now this is a box elder tree right here, which looks similar to poison ivy, but it's not. This right here, you can, you can rub it all over you. <laughs> Just like this. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Oh. <laughs> I'm joking, of course, and this really is a box elder tree. And then this is poison ivy. Hello, everybody. Today I'm at Sequoia National Wildlife Refuge in eastern Oklahoma. It's near a small town called Bayan. I'm going to be here for probably a few hours, maybe. It's right in the middle of the day. It's uh, 12.30 p.m and it's humid probably about 98 percent humidity and it's warm but i'll deal with it i'm here for uh see if i can uh, i'm gonna use my Mer i'm gonna use the merlin app hmm. that's a dead, dead red bellied woodpecker on the road i don't know how that died there i mean i guess somebody could have hit it but the road it's like 20 miles an hour through here Anyway, I'm going to turn on the Merlin app and see what I can find. I'm hoping to find a prairie warbler. That would be nice. That'd be a life bird. But um, I'll set up for whatever else, any other birds I could find. At Sequoia, the visitor center is a good place to start, even when it's closed on the weekend. You can just park and walk around the area, which includes plenty of shade under the trees. There are many tall trees around, and during April and May, there are almost always many species of birds singing, including Baltimore Orioles and Prothonotary Warblers, two species I already have on my list, but I'm always excited to see and hear. For now, I'm only featuring this visit, but I'll make a separate video all about Sequoia National Wildlife Refuge in the future. Next, I hiked around in the woods behind the visitor center and found three big year birds. First, I heard and then had to track down a yellow-throated warbler. The woodland habitat around the visitor center is excellent for birds, but the trees are so tall it seemed like all the birds were a mile high. It made for difficulty locating the birds and photographing them as well. Here's another good example. This is a box elder tree. And this is poison ivy right down here. Poison ivy, box elder tree. I'm gonna move this out of the way so I can keep walking. There's that. There's that yellow-throated warbler. I saw it earlier. Definitely a big year bird. I eventually found the yellow-throated warbler, which isn't a rarity at Sequoia, and it's fairly common where I live as well, but it's nice to get this bird on the list. I also find it to have a fairly striking appearance. Plus, I love hearing its song. Afterwards, I heard and saw an Acadian flycatcher, which is a life bird for me, but I couldn't get a good photograph. I was fairly close to it. In fact, I walked right under the branch it was perched on just before it made a loud, squeaky call and flew away. I heard many Acadian flycatchers during the visit, so it appears it is a fairly common summer resident there. I was then pleasantly surprised to hear the song of a Wilson's warbler, and since I hadn't seen one all through migration, I figured I'd miss my chance. I was super stoked to find the little black-capped yellow bird that I love seeing so much, 
as fleeting as these sightings may be each year. The Wilson's warbler only passes through Sequoia during migration. It winters in Mexico and Central America and breeds mostly in Canada A and Alaska, but also in various locations of the American West and Northeast. I returned to the refuge and this time I walked on the Horton Slough Nature Trail. On the trail, I enjoyed seeing and hearing a lot of birds, all of which were already on my list. Birds such as the Eastern Wood Peewee, Summer Tanager, and Warbling Vireo. This is the kind of luck I'm having today. Oh yeah, he's out. She, nope, that's he. There is something in there that you really want to get to. While walking on the trail, the Merlin app picked up a black-throated blue warbler, but I suspect it accidentally misidentified the song of a northern parallel. I searched and searched for the bird and continued to listen for a song or a call, but all I heard was the northern parallel. If you listen to this, you'll see what I mean. I think the Merlin app made a mistake, so I'm not counting the bird, which would be super rare around here. Please let me know in the comments what you think. Scumbags can't pick up their garbage. Isolated thunderstorms had been moving through the state all day, and it appeared it was going to rain on my parade, so I decided I'd better head home. Just north of the refuge, I saw another big year bird in a spot where I see them often, a northern rough-winged swallow. It is a common summer resident at the refuge and around much of the United States. Just when I was about to cross the Arkansas River, the sky opened up and heavy rain crashed down. It was so intense, several motorists, including myself, had to slow down to about 40 miles per hour. After driving out of the storm cell, the interstate was dry as a bone. I didn't find a prairie warbler, but I was more than happy with the birds I did find. I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please consider clicking on the like icon and subscribing if you haven't already. Thank you. Here are the birds I added to my big year list, with the northern rough-winged swallow bringing the total to 218 so far.